Fungi are really fundamental in uh, the way our ecosystems work. They underpin the health of, of every habitat on our planet, so you find them, I guess we think of them mostly in woodland situations, but you find them in grasslands, you find them in fresh water, you find them in, in marine situations, you find them in the ice. Oh, this is fun. This is the sort of thing you normally walk past and don't see unless you've got an obsession with fungi. I love seeing a common fungus if it's in good condition. Just there's something about them. They're, they're just so stunning. They're so unexpected. They're so short-lived sometimes. You come across what didn't seem to be there yesterday and there is this extraordinary, beautiful structure. It's a little bit gone. They have wonderful colours, they're wonderful shapes, they're wonderful textures, they have amazing smells. When you open people's eyes to the diversity that's out there in the woodlands when you take them for a foray, and most people say, I had no idea we were going to go such a short distance and see so many different structures. 90% of our planet's trees and plants work with a fungal partner when they're in the wild situation and they rely on that fungal partner uh, to give them water, mineral salts and a certain amount of, um, of protection from grazing invertebrates in the soil. This process is called being mycorrhizal, which is uh, quite a sort of a long sounding word, but myco is, is fungus, rhizal is root, and what is happening is that the, the unseen uh, microscopic structures that make up the body of the fungus, this uh, branching network of filamentous cells called the mycelium, um, will actually grow around the root tips of plants and trees and in some cases actually penetrate the cells and that enables an exchange of nutrients to take place. And it, it sounds quite damaging and intimate but it's, it's not at all, it's, it works both ways. So the fungus will take maybe up to 15% of our trees photosynthesis, so carbohydrates and sugars. But in return, the fungus is giving the tree a certain amount of water, um, a certain amount of protection, as I say, from grazing of invertebrates on the roots, and, and fundamentally it's giving them um, mineral salts. Um, and that makes them absolutely crucial in the wild wood. You look at a woodland and you see individual trees um, growing there and they're beautiful and wonderful. But if you explain to people um, about the mycelium below ground and how they are plugged into the tree roots and you say to them, if you take your thoughts below ground and you think of the roots, the root plates of these trees and that growing on each of these root plates there's going to be maybe two, two dozen different fungi plugged onto the roots and then each of those fungi will be plugged onto other trees in the wood round about. So that instead of having a wood of individual trees, what you've got is one huge networked organism. And there's a phrase that's knocking about at the moment and people are calling it the wood wide web. And this, this network, we're only just, our researchers are only just beginning to get their heads around how important it is but it seems as though it's capable of transform, transferring nutrients right through the wood. So if, if an animal dies in one corner of the wood and, and breaks down, that these nutrients are then available and they're being picked up by the fungal mycelium and transferred through the wood to all the different trees. It's an extraordinary thing to think about. It's almost the last habitat that we need to really thoroughly investigate. Um, it's like the deep parts of the ocean. We really don't think about what's going on beneath our feet. Um, out of sight, out of mind, and yet it's absolutely fundamental to the ecosystems and the habitats on our planet, what's going on down there.